Guys, Najee Harris is on the block. Scott, we'll start with you. It is a 12-team Superflex PPR 1.75 for the tight end start 10. Are you going Najee Harris and Evan Ingram or Dalton Kincaid? Go ahead, man. Start 10, 1.75. I think for me, this comes down to Dalton Kincaid, the asset. What can I do with that? If I tried to pivot to something else, something that's not a tight end, do I want to just ride out the tight end advantage? I have to kind of assess my goals and then decide what do I have with Dalton Kincaid, the asset. If it's what you think and you're kind of already stuck making the bet on Kincaid, you're getting a tight end that probably for the next year or two, and he has 29, so you're giving up some age here. You're getting Evan Ingram, who can fill the exact same spot short term as Kincaid, maybe better, especially in a 1.75. He's probably going to have more receptions, more targets, maybe not more touchdowns, maybe not more yards, but I think short term, you can fill the same spot and you're getting a free Najee. Now, Najee's not an asset. We'll talk a little bit about that later on in the video. He is a placeholder. He is a guy that can absorb a lot of touches. He is in what we think could be a good situation for his skill set. Ultimately, if I think this is the best I can do with Kincaid, the asset, I am fine taking the package. I have a little more flexibility. I could move Ingram if I wanted. I could probably flip him in a 1.75 for, could I get a 26 first? Could I pivot to him and another tight end and I get a second? Something like that. I could continue to down tier. So I'm okay with the two if I've already vetted out that I can't turn Kincaid into Garrett Wilson or Drake right. London or, you know, an asset that I think has even more flexibility. Shane, what do you think here, man? It's a 12 team super flex PPR 1.75 for the tight end start 10 Najee and Ingram or Kincaid. So Scott's point at the end there was uh, probably the most cogent. I don't even think that's the right use of that word, whatever. Like I could use Kincaid in a 1.75 tight end premium to tier up to like a, a Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. Like I could probably in some leagues get Chris Olave for him depending on how people sure. feel about Chris Olave in those leagues, but not Garrett Wilson, oddly enough. I'm going to go with Dalton Kincaid. I know that Evan Ingram could match his production, but I think if they do have equal production next year, the price on Kincaid would far exceed and the value of Kincaid would far exceed Evan Ingram's. And I don't see a reason why his production can't match Evan Ingram. So it's a player take, but yeah, I think I'm going to actually lean Kincaid. And Scott spoke to the point of, you know, Najee really isn't an asset. You can use him for production, but he's not really an asset. How about this one? We got a 12 team super flex PPR 1.75 for the tight end start 10. So same format. You going Najee and a 26 first or Garrett Wilson? Well, we kind of mentioned Garrett Wilson before even knowing this right. deal. So the same deal that you take previously, you take out Evan Ingram, you add a 26 first. I think I'm going Garrett Wilson because that is the goal to get credit for a guy like Najee in a real trade where you're getting a real asset. So I think this is exactly what you would have tried to do with Kincaid, but you probably would have had to add to Kincaid to get the Garrett Wilson side. And here you're just substituting essentially the first in the deal for Ingram and you're still ending up in the same spot. So I'm taking Garrett Wilson. Do I want to give up first in deals, it, it probably doesn't feel good the week of the season to give up Najee and a first for another starter because you're looking at your lineup you're going man Najee could be a hammer we say Najee's not a value but no running backs after what the second or third year of their career are values I do think there are parallels with Najee where you like David Montgomery that's Najee Harris that's his career arc where you're just hoping his next spot is a place where you go he's going to be part of it even if there is a Jameer Gibbs or a Devon A. Chain next to him who cares he's there to get touchdowns he's there to absorb carries and if it's a good team I actually I think Najee is a good buy, just not like this. I don't want to give up a premier asset like Garrett Wilson, and Najee is one of the things I have to take back. So pretty easily Wilson here. Chain, same format. It's a 12-team super flex, tight end premium, start 10. Najee in a 26 first or Garrett Wilson? Yeah, if, if this was a 25 first, it'd be at least competitive. This doesn't really feel competitive to me. This this would be Garrett. Again, just, just from the perspective of even if you don't like Garrett Wilson, you could then leap up to something else with Garrett Wilson. You know, if you don't don't have any elite wide receivers on your roster and you want to try to tear up to one, get you some Garrett Wilson and do so. And then the 26 first, I love it because I love if I'm going to move a first, it's not going to be one coming next year. It's going to be one after that. Gives me some time to get it back. So yeah, give, give me the Garrett Wilson side. Shane there mentioned that getting Garrett Wilson can then get you into a conversation with one of the bigger names. I was going to ask you, Scott, does Najee Harris have the juice to get you up to a Jameer Gibbs or a Brees? And would you want to tack on you know, a 25 first and a 26 first on top of Najee Harris to get up to one of the big boys. Does he have the juice? No, 
but I think it's very, very specific to the manager you're trading with. Most people, when they see a running back coming back in a deal, they're not think about why Shane would trade away Brees Hall. Probably because he's going, I don't really need Brees Hall on this team. Not that I'm looking to downgrade and 30% of what I'm getting back is in the form of Najee Harris. It is more, give me a receiver and a first for Brees Hall and I'll do it. But taking a running back back, it just feels like unless I am out on the running back, Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley, someone like that. If I down tier to Najee and I get back a piece, then I'm thinking I could be willing to do that. But when you're at the very, very top, I don't think it has the steam to get there. And if I said, Shane, would you give up Najee Harris in a first for Jonathan Taylor? You're going, no, (laughs) I don't want to give up anything plus a first for Jonathan Taylor. So I just don't think there's a tier up unless it's a very specific situation, maybe an older running back. Could you do McCaffrey possibly to the right manager that's scared of McCaffrey? They might take Najee and take the first. And that is their yeah. hedging way of getting out on McCaffrey, but not giving up contending because most teams with McCaffrey are, are trying to win right now. Shane, our usual format, are you going Debo Samuel or Najee Harris? Debo. Honestly, that feels a lot like what do I need? Because they feel like they're the same type of asset. Mm-hmm. One is a receiver though, but I don't think just the fact that Debo is a receiver makes him any more desirable. If anything, the community views him like a running back is like one more injury and he's cooked forever as well. Or if he's if Debo's not on San Francisco, would anybody want him? Probably not. If Najee was on another team, someone may go, well, is he going to start? Okay, sure. He's the same thing we'll, as he we'll is carry now. the rock. Yeah. Correct. So how about Najee or Goddard? In a 1.75 tight end premium. What do you think, Shane? If they feel like very similar at their positions, but I actually think impact wise, it's harder to find what Najee could give me versus God. I feel like I could plug in Tyler Conklin or Hunter Henry and I could get closer to Dallas Goddard. What do you think? Yeah, there is that. And there's also the fact that if I if I hold on to Najee, let's say one or two weeks, right? And he's smashing, which he should be in that uh, Atlanta led offense. Yeah, the Atlanta North offense where he's getting 20, 23 touches a game. Maybe someone goes, well, I'll give you George Kittle for Najee Harris. And then we're talking in 1.75. Because like Scott said, I could just go out and get Tyler Conklin off someone. Maybe Pat Fryermuth. I don't know about Pat Fryermuth. But you know what I mean? Those guys are in that same realm as Dallas Goddard. 